Hello and welcome to the second part of this JavaScript tutorial series where we recreate the game Asteroids. In this video we're going to create the asteroids themselves that float around the ship in space. So currently this is what our game does. We have a little ship that flies around the screen. Wouldn't it be nice to have some asteroids floating around it? So here's our code. You can go ahead and download this from the link below. So the first step would be to set up our asteroids uh, variable. So just underneath where we set up our ship, we can create, or how about we set up asteroids. So that'll just be a variable. We'll call it roids just to keep it short. Roids equals a blank array. And how about we create a function called create uh, asteroid belt. Because during the game we'll probably have to call this a couple of times as we reset the screen and so on. Create asteroid belt, that'll do. So go down and create, set that up somewhere. Here we go. Function, create asteroid belt. Now what does it do? Probably the first step is to clear our, uh, clear our roids array. Roids will equal that. So I'm just clearing it because it may be populated during game. Secondly, uh, we want to loop over the number of asteroids that we'll be creating, don't we? So we'll, we could use a loop for that. For, so for var i equals zero, i is less than, less than what? How about we create a constant? So up the top, just create a constant. We'll prefix all these by roids. Yeah, roids num. And we'll say there's three of them. So this is the starting number of asteroids. I say starting because as the difficulty increases, we'll probably be increasing this as the level goes up. Roids num. So i is less than roids num. i plus plus. So that'll loop over all the asteroids. Now we want to add roids push. That'll add something to our array. How about we create a function called new asteroid? Again, we'll probably need this for later on. New asteroid. Um, yeah, we'll try that. So we'll go make that down here. Function new asteroid. We can create a variable called roid. It's going to be an object. And we'll return that object return roid. Now what do we need to know for each asteroid? Well we need to know an xy coordinate. I think we should pass the x and y components because later on in the game we'll need to know the exact location. So x will equal x, y will equal y. We'll need to know an x velocity which is going to be some random, random velocity. Uh, how about we set up a constant soon called roids speed. And we'll have to divide that by the frame rate. We also want a random direction. Not only do we want a random magnitude, we want a random direction. So to achieve that, we can go math random. If math random is less than 0 0.5, then multiply by 1, so it'll go in a positive direction. Else multiply by minus 1, it'll go in a negative direction. We can just copy and paste that for the y component as well. We'll also want to know the radius of each asteroid. It will change as we shoot them later on. And that'll just be based on some roids size divided by 2. And we'll also want to know an, a random angle. So this has to be in this has to be in radians. So math random times math pi times 2, which is the same as 360 degrees. So this will be in radians. So let's go ahead and create these uh, size and speed, roid size and speed up here. So roid size will be, uh, let's say 100. So this will be the start, maximum starting size. No, we'll say the starting size of asteroids in pixels. Okay, Android speed. I'm just taking some guesses here about what sort of speed we want. 
I'll put it in pixels per second. So this will be the max starting speed, not peed, speed of asteroids in pixels per second. Okay. So we've got the starting size of asteroids in pixels is 100 and the, start, the max starting speed of asteroids in pixels per second, which is 50 pixels per second. That looks good. Because we're passing X and Y, we'll have to go and modify our call up here. So there'll be some X and Y value that we'll put through there. Now what's that going to be? We can just create two variables here, var X and Y. How about we just create two random positions on the on the screen? So that'll just be math random times by canvas width. Canvas dot width. We'll probably want to round that down. Math floor. And do a similar thing for the y direction, except that we'll be using height. I can think of one problem here. We're potentially going to have asteroids landing on the ship. We'll handle that soon. Right, now let's go down to the update function. So where we draw our ship, let's, after that we'll draw the asteroids. So we'll have to loop through each of the asteroids in order to achieve this. So var i equals zero. i is less than the roids roids.length, length is just a property I think, and i++. First of all, let's set up the color of the asteroids. Stroke style will equal, I looked this color up before, slate gray, just to get them a bit of a different color from the ship. And we also need to set the line width. Line width will equal, we can base it off ship size I think, ship size divided by 20. Now let's plot out what we're going to do here. How are we going to draw these things? Well, I think we need to draw a path. Draw a path. What shape are they going to be? Probably a polygon would be suited, so draw the polygon. We'll work out these details soon. And we also want to move the asteroid. Move the asteroid. And handle, uh, handle edge of screen. So we don't want them floating off into space, do we? Edge of screen. Good. Now let's go back up to our where we create our asteroids. So we want to create a random number of sides. So we can achieve that by, well, we'll call, make a property called uh, vert, short for vertex or vertices. So it'll be math random times We'll make a constant called, say, math uh, roids vert. Now, in order to achieve what we want, we want a, a random number of sides, but we don't want sides equal to zero or something, do we? So let's first of all add one to this to increase our maximum to what we expect. So that'll be, just say roids vert equals 10, so that'll give us a number between zero and 10. As I said, zero's, a zero-sided polygon is no good, so we'll have to add something to this. How about we add half the roids vert so that'll be 5, for example. We'll need to find the floor of all this to make it an integer, floor. We don't want 3.5 sides, for example. So that'll, if roids vert equals 10, that'll give us a random number between 0 and 10, plus half of 10, which is 5. So a random number between 5 and 15, centered around this number. Sounds good. Don't need the semicolon again. So let's go create, go ahead and create that. Roids vert will equal 10. And this will be the average number of vertices, vertices on each asteroid. Okay, so head down to our update function. So each asteroid will have a random number of vertices. All the way down here. Right, there we go. Draw a path. Right, so to draw the path, we need to context uh, begin path. And then we want to move to the first point. So move to, move to the first XY location. 
Now I'm thinking to save us a little bit of time, we should probably get the properties, grab all the properties and put them into a variable here. So uh, get the asteroid properties, just to save us a little bit of typing I think. So we'll set up some variables here, x, y, the radius, the angle, and the number of vertices. So x will equal roids i dot x, and then we can go ahead and do the same for all our other things. So y will be the roids i, right, roids y I should say. The radius will be dot r, the angle will be dot a, and the number of vertices will be dot vert. Okay, so our initial point will be the x location, the center of the asteroid, plus the radius multiplied by the cosine, the cosine of the angle. Similarly, the y component will be the sine, the radius times the sine of the angle. Now to draw the polygon, we'll have to loop over the number of vertices. So we can set up a new variable to say j will equal zero, j is less than the number of vertices, uh, j++, and we'll want to draw a line to each corner of the polygon. So context line 2, line 2, So in a similar way to what we've done above, so x plus the radius times the cosine of the angle, but we'll have to modify it based on which vertice, which vertex we're currently at. So we could do that by modifying this by j times 360 degrees, math pi times 2, but we'll have to divide that by the number of vertices, right? So that'll, for example, if there was 10 vertices, then this will modify the angle by 36 degrees each time, which is what we want. Do the same thing for y, except that we need to change it to sine. After that, we'll have to close the path and draw it by just going context.stroke. Stroke. Right, uh, just a quick review of our code, just make sure there's no glaring mistakes. Um, so we're going to create the asteroid belt, uh, that should be a 0, not an O. Divide by that, math for random times the can, that should probably be canv, not canvas. Right, and then they'll push some new asteroids, set up some properties, I think that's pretty good, and then we'll draw them down in the uh, update function down here. Let's try it. There we go. So we've got some randomly positioned, randomly positioned polygons from size 5, so 5 sides to 15 sides I guess. Let's see if we can get a 5 sided one. There's a 7, just to make, there we go, there's a pentagon. Awesome. But as I said, mentioned earlier probably, is that we don't want the asteroids to appear on the player like that. So let's go ahead and fix that up now. We can do that up in our create asteroids uh, method, create asteroid belt, here. We'll have to do something here. We can handle this using a do while loop. So do all of that while some condition. Now what is the condition? We want a buffer, don't we, between the asteroid and the ship. So how about we create a function called distance or dist between uh, points. Distance between points, and we're going to pass each of the coordinates. So the ship's location, ship x, ship y, and the potential asteroid location, x, y. Now as long as that is less than some buffer, so we'll just say the roids, base it on the roid size, say times 2, plus the radius of the ship. As long as it's less than that, if it's less than that, we'll keep creating new random points until it's not less than that. So let's go ahead and create this function. Distance between points. Now what are we passing? We're passing the points. So x1, y1, x2, y2. Alright, so we're going to return. Now if you know your Cartesian coordinate system, 
it's the square root of the square, so math power, the square of x2 minus x1, x2 minus x1 squared, plus, similar thing with the y component, y power, y2 minus y1 squared. That should be okay. Let's try it. It's hard to tell because there's only three, <laughs> there's only three roids. How about we bump this up to say 300? Ah, there we go. See that buffer zone? So they're being randomly placed, but they're not being randomly placed within our buffer zone. You could adjust that to suit your taste. How pretty. Put that back to three. Great, that's that handled. Okay, so what about the shape of these asteroids? So just have a look at them. They're perfect polygons, aren't they? Not exactly very asteroid looking. So let's add some jaggedness to this. So how about we go up and create a constant called roids jag. And let's define that to be a number between 0 and 0.1. So let's pick a number, 0 0.4. This is the jaggedness of the asteroids. And let's define that as 0 equals none, 1 equals lots. Okay? Now back where we create our asteroids, so in new asteroid, let's create some variable, some property, which uh, modifies the vertex location. So each vertice will be one radius away from the center. How about we create, say, an offset? So offs, that'll do. Offsets is just going to be an array. And let's set up the array here. So create the, create the vertex offsets array. Okay, so it'll be based on the size of the, the number of vertices. So var i will equal zero. i is less than the roid dot vert. i plus plus. So we'll loop through for each vertex and create a random sort of multiplier to the radius. Okay, so the maximum we'd want is the is, so the minimum we'd want is zero, and the maximum maybe say two, two times the radius. So that would be in the worst, the most extreme situation. So let's go roid dot offsets push. We're going to push um, a random number, random number based off the jag, so the roid's jaggedness. How are we going to handle it if it's, so if it's zero, we want nothing, we just want it to be all of this to equal one. If it's one, it could potentially equal zero to two. So how about we times this by two and add one minus the roid's jaggedness. Now does that work? Let's have a think about this. So if it was zero, zero times two is zero, so there'd be zero, plus one minus zero, one. Okay, that works fine. So there'd be no jaggedness. If it was maximum, so if this equaled 1, we'd have 1 times 2 is 2, so 0 to 2, plus 1 minus 1 is 0, so it'd be a, num a random multiplier between 0 and 2, that sounds good. How about in the middle, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 2 is 1, so 0 to 1, plus 1 minus 0 0.5, that would be a random number between 0 0.5 and 1.5, sounds good. So we're populating this offsets here, great, now how do we handle that? Let's go down to the asteroids here. All we have to do is multiply this radius here by that offset. So how about we create up here, hmm, that should be vert, doesn't really matter, it's obviously declaring it anyway. Offs, offs will equal roids i, offs. Okay. Now the first point is going to be, so this will be the radius times the offs. It'll be the first position, won't it? The offs zero. So whatever that random multiplier is, it's going to multiply the radius by it. 
and we're going to do a similar thing to here. Now how about here? Well, it's not going to be zero, it's going to be J, isn't it? It's going to be J in here. But we've already done j equals zero up here, so we don't. How about we start at one here? So we'll start j at one. Yeah, that should work. Now let's have a look at see what that looks like. Hmm, looking promising. Actually, it's looking pretty good. Looking very good. Okay, I think we solved it. So ooh, let's go test different very um, different uh, values of jaggedness say point, let's do the extreme, so 1, what will that look like? Yes, you can see here they're very jagged. Okay, now if it's 0 there should be no jaggedness, it should be a perfect polygon. Yep, and then as you add more jaggedness, so point 0.1 should be a little bit jagged, yeah, just a little bit. Depends what shapes you want in your... Uh, I'm going to go stick with 0.4, that looks pretty good to me. Awesome. Now all we have to do now is move these things, get them moving, go down to where we had... Uh, where are we? Draw the polygon, close, move the asteroid. So that'll just be uh, roids i dot x plus equals roids i dot x v, that's the velocity in the x direction. Similar for the y direction, let's just, oops, this is probably one of the easier parts, let's just check to make sure they're moving. Yeah, so they're going at random speeds, we could probably bump up the number of, um, bump up the number of roids to begin with, just to see if, let's say 10. Yeah, they're definitely going at different speeds, different directions. Cool, and the color is quite nice, isn't it? Awesome. Let's put that back to three. We also want to handle what happens when they go off the edge of the screen. So currently, if you look at these asteroids, they go off the screen and then they disappear forever. Let's uh, bring them back onto the other side of the screen. Handle the edge of the screen. So if if uh, roids i dot x, if that's less than zero, minus roids i dot radius, if it's less than zero, then it's gone off the left of the screen, so we want to set roids i x to equal uh, the canvas width plus the roids i radius. Yeah. Um, else, it's not really an else, it's probably more of an else if, else if um, this situation, roids roids x is greater than the canvas width plus, plus its radius, then we want to set to this. Roids x will equal that. That's for the x direction. Do a similar thing for the y direction. So y, 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 except it'll be based on height, won't it? Height. Let's give that a go. Okay, going off screen, this right one here, will it pop back on? Yep. There it is over there. There's one going off the bottom of the screen. Is it coming back on? Yep, there it is. So they're coming back on. We can bump up the number of asteroids just to get a good feeling for it. Roids number 10. There we go. So one went off the top up there. One's going off the side here. Good. I think that's looking good. So that's the end of today's tutorial. Uh, next time we'll focus on collision detection and making this uh, making the ship blow up when it hits a when it hits an asteroid. Uh, I'll post the code from this tutorial in the description below, so you can download it and play with it if you like.
Until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.